Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, I'm back here with the Apollo add-on, the AMSO. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you know what that is. And if you don't, then go back and watch part one. You can learn a little bit more about it. I've had several requests over the years from people who wanted me to take a look at this. And I, I, I just kept putting it off. For one thing, I don't know a whole lot about it myself, but I have played with it enough that I think I can at least give people some idea of maybe how to do more with it than they themselves knew. But I'm by no means a pro at this particular add-on. I've spent very little time with it. But in the last video, we looked at just basically, number one, how to launch the Apollo, uh, you know, the Saturn V, how to get it into orbit. And then we set up a, a TLI burn to go out to the moon. And then we uh, disconnected or rather undocked from, uh, from the main stage here and we're gonna we're gonna try to dock this part with the limb, and then and then continue from there. So that's kind of where we left off. So let's just jump right back in. If you haven't seen part one, go back and watch it. You know, switch camera views. Go back to real time. And what I'm doing now is I'm just translating forward. I'm closing the distance between this vessel and the limb. And again, as I was kind of stating in the last video, what we're trying to do here. We have this uh, white disc on the limb, and it has these black, uh, this black crosshair. I need to get my crosshair lined up with it, but I also need to make sure that I can't see any red. So let me uh, rotate this way. And because I can see so much red, I know that I'm too, uh, I'm too high right now. I need to translate down, so let me do that. But I also want to kind of almost rotate up at the same time and when everything is kind of lined up the way it needs to be you won't be able to see any red anymore you slow down my forward movement okay and let me kill my rotation and now I'll null out the translation in this direction because I feel like I'm, I'm now I'm now translated down far enough or close to it I'm still still not quite there uh, but I'm also translated, let me see, too far. I'm, I'm translated a bit too far to the right, so I need to translate left. Oops, that's rotation. And still a little bit more down. We're still not quite down far enough. Okay, now our left right seems about where it needs to be, so let me null out that direction and just continue translating down. And we're going to say that's good enough. Try to null out those movements. And now rotate. Because every time you rotate, it's going to change your appearance of that disc a little bit. But we can see we're close to the center and we're still too high. So translate down a bit more. I feel like I'm getting really close to the limb, but I can't tell for sure. Now you can see that the red is pretty much gone. So let's null that out. So that means we should be translated correctly. Still just a touch of red there on the top, so let's translate down a little bit more. And again, that'll happen every time you stop translating and then switch over to rotation. It's going to affect how things look, so that should be pretty close now. Let's rotate up. And I don't see any red now at all, so I feel like I'm probably where I need to be. But again, the one thing I'm not 100% sure of on this process is exactly how my orientation needs to be. I think it's right at the moment. So let me start translating it forward and then I'm gonna cheat and look at the external view. Yeah, so basically, because this is obviously going to go into the docking port there. So now it's going to be a matter of, you know, fine tuning here. I'm just gonna translate down a touch Oh boy, that's so irritating not having the not having the translation rotation callouts. And it's really sensitive, the, the translation and everything. Slow down. Okay, 
now I'm actually a little too low. Now I'm, I'm, this is all control thrust at this point. Now I'm just nulling out my up-down translation and maybe maybe favoring just a touch of down because I can see that that red line starting to appear at the top. Now a little bit of rotation. So that's quite a bit of red. So okay, everything seems about dead center. So let's just touch in a bit of down now. And then a little more forward to make sure we're still moving forward. And let me get out of the zoom a little bit too. That way I'm not getting too confused as to how far away I am. A little more on the down. Switching to rotation, being very careful with the rotation because it's extremely sensitive. Back to translation, translate down, back to rotation. Translating down some more. Okay, and all that out. Oh boy, way too much translation there. Okay, we are pretty well lined up. Boy, that is really sensitive. Okay, okay I feel like my translation is holding pretty well at the moment. So now I just. Oh my gosh, I can't even believe how sensitive that is. Okay, everything is very centered. Oh my gosh. Translating forward a little more. A little bit of up rotation. You can see what we need, just the slightest amount of down. And I heard, I felt it dock rather. Okay, uh, I do have the sound pack installed, but not exactly sure how some of the sounds come and go. Okay, so that's the docking, and it's not hard. Uh, I, I, I actually think the space shuttle is a little bit harder to dock because you're docking on the back, and all the controls are weird. But it's this really sensitive. It's surprisingly sensitive. So that's that. All right, now what we need to do is we basically need to pull the limb out of this cage. And I have to refer to my notes. Once you have, that's right, just J. It's usually J. It's usually J, K, these keys. It's almost always J. So once you're docked, press J. Do I have to change focus? After docking with the limb J to extract the limb, I can't remember if I have to switch focus to. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so just J, and that'll pull the limb out. And I want to make sure. Okay, see now I also have this information: rotation, translation. So if I'm in rotation, trans translation, I want to put in just a touch of reverse. That's probably good enough, and that just pulls the limb out of this part. And it's kind of an always it's always a little interesting to me to give some consideration as to what happens to this thing. You know what I mean? It's on its way to the moon, but it's not going to be controlled anymore. We're attached from it, it's now floating in space, so it's basically going to become space debris. And I've, I've kind of wondered, you know, what happened to all that stuff that we launched with the Apollo missions, and is it did it manage to finally crash into the moon? Did it burn up some somehow? Get back to the Earth and burn up? Is it flung out into oblivious space? You know, what happened to it? Kind of interesting. Okay, so that gets the limb extracted, and then um, I think effectively, you know, all we need to do now 
is warp time forward to go to the moon. Just check my old notes. Uh, I think you could, in theory, transfer the crew to the limb. I think that's kind of the point of having the limb is that you have that more, more livable space. But I don't think this particular add-on has crew transfer between the modules. It might. I don't remember. Really nice reflections, though. You can see that as I turn the camera, you can see the, the blue earth right there. Okay, uh, you have to switch vessels to the limb and press J to activate the limb. Okay, I think I remember that. Yeah. So we're going to press F3 to get into the limb vessel. And when you press J, apparently it'll, ex it'll expand the legs, which I, I don't actually know if we would do that at this point or if we would wait until we were in lunar orbit to do that, but we'll do it now. So that powers up the limb. You probably, uh, you see, the thing, the thing, what I'm thinking about is would the three astronauts really stay cooped up in here for the whole ride out to the moon? I almost think they wouldn't. Um, and again, referring to the movie, I know they didn't. They went back and forth between the two. So this, when you, when you press J, it, ex it powers up the limb, it extends the legs, and I also seem to recall that it actually transfers crew automatically. I don't really know how to know where the crew's at. Let's get out of this view. We don't need that anymore. And let's change our field of view back to the usual 55 or 60, something like that. Shows one of them there, but I don't think, I don't think these graphics are necessarily an accurate representation of where people are actually at. Okay, so now we're going to coast to the moon, and I'm not going to go through a whole landing process. I just wanted to show a little bit about how to use this module, because we didn't really get our, I really didn't get my plan for the moon set up very well. So let me bring Transex up here, go f uh, target the moon again, go forward on the side to view the encounter. And we might be able to make a little bit of an adjustment now. Translation. So that's not the way. Just doing a bit of an adjustment here to bring... It's prob probably using a lot of fuel to do this, because I'm now having the mass of two objects. I should probably even set up a maneuver so that I don't waste fuel. Let's just do that really quick. View over to maneuver, turn maneuver mode on. And let's just get an idea of what we need to do to clean this burn up a little bit instead of just guessing random directions. So we'll do an adjustment. So obviously prograde is what we need. Okay, that's good enough. I'm not going to actually set the maneuver up. Just get an idea of what the direction was that's missing there. So rotation, and we're going to look for prograde, which should be, let's see, we're facing 10. I think orbiter just crashed. Oh no, it didn't. So I'm just getting rotated over to the prograde position. Okay, back over, to, uh, now I'll switch to translation. I just want to put in enough translation. See, it's not holding. It's a bit unfortunate. I wonder if I switched over to the other one if it would hold better. So I'm just going to have to deal with that. Translate forward. And just plan on having some rotation in there as well to keep it from spinning out.
just want to get in a little closer to the moon. Periapsis is pretty far off. All right, we'll go with that. Let's let's at least get out of the Earth's strong sphere of influence before we worry any more about that. Okay, warping time forward, and we'll go with the usual hundred for now. Watch the Earth disappear behind us. Go to a thousand. Oh, look, okay. it doesn't it doesn't like a thousand. That's the deal. It doesn't even really like a hundred. There must be audio events that it's trying to play. I guess somehow I got the audio messed up so it's not playing. But that's that's why it stops so often. It's trying to play out these different audio events. And you just basically just keep tapping time warp and it skips the events. Text from a known sender to hear it. Say listen. So annoying. Sorry. And I'm basically just skipping through these audio events. That's why I keep having to hit time warp. There's a bunch of them. If you ever actually play this whole flight out and without time warp, a little bit more simulation experience than I'm up for. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much audio there is. It's insane. I can't even, I'm only three hours out. All right, I'm not going to be able to go through this. It's just going to take too long. So the idea then would be that you'd warp time forward to the moon, somehow bypassing all these audio events. And once you get to the moon, you're going to let's let's so let's pretend that we're out to the moon now. So then, obviously, you're going to do your lunar orbit insertion. And you're going to have to separate the limb from the CSM so that you can land this part on, to, on the moon. And, there, and there's just a very specific sequence that you have to go through because if you separate things incorrectly, then you're either, you're either going to mess it up entirely or you're going to have to redock back to it uh, to, you know, to make sure that the crew is all in the right place. I think I recall one time I, tra I landed on the moon or started the process and I forgot to transfer like the correct number of crew back to the to the limb or something I forget exactly but um, and it just it messed things up for me so let me see if I can time warp yet I still can't so once you coast to the moon what I have here in my notes is that and this was written a long time ago so I don't remember any of it is that I'm going to press K and then right arrow to get to the sim panel. Is that that I didn't what I didn't include? Would that be from inside of the limb or inside? Let's see. Again, pretending I'm at the moon. Okay, that must be from inside the CSM. So let me switch over to the CSM. So I'm saying press K. And then right arrow to get to the sim panel jettison. Mm -hmm. Might also be that it knows I'm not close enough to the moon, so it might not let me do that action. Because there are some cases like that. For example, when you get when you initially get into orbit. If you don't do your TLI burn and you press J just to separate the uh, stages, it'll actually give you like an abort warning because it basically it knows that, well, you're still carrying a lot of fuel, so surely you haven't done the TLI burn yet. So there's like a, there's a very specific sequence that you have to go through. But um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Again, I'm, I'm not big on this module. It's, it's obviously very cool, very well done 
but it's just not something I've spent enough time with. But I did want to talk a little bit about it because it's it comes up so often. And I know the people that are really interested are going to be very disappointed that I didn't go through more of the details. But again, I just don't know enough about it. But at the very least, hopefully it gives you some idea of how to how to play with it yourself. And if you're interested in it, then, you know, that'll plant the seed for you, hopefully spark the interest that you can dig in and, and learn more about it. And if you, and if you get uh, really good at it and you want to just get, get a good set of notes for me, a, a sequence, you know, one, do this, two, do this. Um, and so on. Yeah, definitely send that to me and maybe I'll check it out in the future. I'm very particular about notes though. They have to be written so well that I can literally just read your notes and just press exactly what you tell me to press, make sure that I know which vessel that I'm supposed to be in and all that kind of thing. Cause I, I can't, I can't assume that I'm going to know that. Um, so if you're interested, you know, download the uh, module, check it out for yourself, see what you think. And, um, I don't, I don't know that I'll really do anything more with this, at least not anytime in the near future. So it's going to be it for this video and I don't know what's coming up next. So I will see you, uh, in that video whenever, whenever it comes up. Random audio sequence. There should be a reply. Okay, Captain. Yeah. So basically every time you warp time forward, it stops, and then it's it's wanting to play that next audio uh, event. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, go ahead. Raj, uh, Lem looks to be in uh, pretty fine shape. Uh, about all we can see uh, from here. But if you press T, it will skip that event, but it'll come out of time warp right before the next one. And there are so many of these, it makes it really hard to warp time okay, forward all the way to the moon because it's wanting to stop like every 20, 30 minutes uh, and have another audio event. Uh, Roger, Apollo 11. Go ahead. Okay, we're pressing on with the procedure.